On your right is Ed Clark. Ed is the director of the Wildlife Center of Virginia. Let's give a warm welcome to Ed. Next we have Jim Martin, who is the director of the Berkeley Institute for Conservation out in Oregon. And Reese Lukai from the Center of Conservation Biology at the College of William and Mary is a research associate and guru of all things eagles too. What we're going to talk about for just a few minutes, we're going to, the conversation is going to vary a little bit. And we're going to have, um, can we start off with Jim? And Jim, I'm going to, Jim is going to give just a, a very brief synopsis of some of the things that he discussed in the symposium a few minutes ago. Jim is a big picture kind of guy. And his specialty is fish. And the reason that we brought him in for this it, this event is because he looks at conservation as a whole. And th from our perspective and what we do here, we are looking at a particular species this weekend, the, the eagle. And we're looking at eagles, you know, more in our region. What Jim does is look at conservation. He has worked with the, um, the wild, tell me again. The Oregon Fish, Department of Fish and Wildlife at Oregon for, for 30 years. So he looks at all species, he looks at the big picture of conservation. So, so he's going to talk for just a, a few minutes, and then we're going to ask a couple of questions. Jim? I'll just turn a little bit because most of you guys are over here. Um, in the conference room I gave about an hour's talk uh, to a bunch of e eagle advocates uh, about What's going on in our country right now? You know, we're here celebrating the recovery of the bald eagle. And we're celebrating this particular nest. We're celebrating the symbolism that it stands for. And the point I was making is we would not have had the success story with eagles in this country if 30 or 40 years ago we hadn't made a tough decision, a regulatory decision about DDT. And that was a big fight. And there were plenty of people who didn't want us to make that fight. It's going to be bad for the economy. It's going to be bad for agriculture. It's going to be bad for the status quo. But we had the courage 40 years ago to make that decision about DDT, and we celebrate the result of that today. 40 years ago, we had the budget in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Endangered Species Program to be able to work with the state fish and wildlife agencies, and we had enough hunters and fishermen and their funds within the state fish and wildlife agencies to put together a cadre of conservationists to help save the eagle, the victory we celebrate today. And my challenge to people was, given the politics of what's going on right now, given the deficit debate and the budget and all the extreme conservative points of view in Congress, would we have that courage today to ban DDT? Would we have that courage today to allocate the dollars to recover endangered species? And I reflected back a hundred years ago when Teddy Roosevelt and a bunch of crazy people created the foundation of conservation that we have enjoyed for a hundred years. When I look at House Resolution 1, the proposed budget that came out of the House a few years ago that would have essentially defunded conservation in this country in the name of deficit reduction and with a bunch of very anti-environment budget writers because, you know, they're job killing. I wonder what Teddy Roosevelt was thinking rolling over in his grave. I wonder what Rachel Carson was thinking rolling over in her grave. I wonder if we would have saved the bald eagle 40 years from now if we were making the decisions for the bald eagle today. So that's the challenge. The challenge is this field is full of people who love eagles. And this the field is full of people telling Ed what he ought to do with those little eagles if, if they're doing something they don't like. With enthusiasm and with energy and with power and with 75,000 members of Eagle Nation here advising him on saving those three eagles. The question is, would 75,000 people tell Barack Obama and Mitt Romney and John Boehner and Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi what we ought to do about saving the conservation framework of this country. We've got a departure between the passion of wildlife advocates 
about an individual animal or an individual nest and the policy context that's before us politically today. We've got a hell of an election coming up. There's going to be a hell of a clash of values. They need to hear from you just as strongly about the future of conservation as they need to hear about what to do with these three eagles. That's the message. I hope that stimulates a few questions. We can have a conversation. That's kind of an executive summary of what I talked about for the last hour. When I'm invited to speak all around the country, I will speak about only one thing, and it is the survival of conservation in America. Not for me, I'm 64, I won't live forever. My grandchildren and their grandchildren. And I just wanna challenge you as I wrap up to think, if the decision today was to try to save an eagle that was on its way to extinction, would we have the courage and would we have the budget prioritization and would we have the strength to ban DDT if the decision was made today? Thank you. Jim, while you're still there, I have two questions um, from two guests. And well, one why don't you kind of let these guys make their opening remarks? Oh. Well, I, I think you yeah, each ought to make an opening remark because, because most of the audience didn't hear your presentations. Yeah, do you want to okay. kind of thing? Okay. Just a little brief summary. This has not been rehearsed. <laughs> okay, next is Ed Clark. I think the reason we all want to come over here is because we want to look at you while we're talking. Be sure you're still awake. No, it's uh, my, my dear friend uh, Jim Martin and I have roused the rabble and fought the good fight together for many, many years. We both uh, served on the board of the National Wildlife Federation, Jim for 11 years, I for nine years, and through that organization and through the many other organizations with which we are associated, both in our respective professional capacities, but also in our avocational and, and volunteer capacities, but it all basically comes down to the same point. We who care will watch the decline and do nothing in the process or stand up and stop the decline. And that's really what it boils down to. We have uh, a really powerful opportunity with all of the people here, all of the people out across the nation who have watched these webcams, the people who are so committed to these animals, we need to reconnect that passion, that commitment with a sense of responsibility, not just to make donations, so please don't let those stop, and not just with how many hours you spend staring at the computer screen worshiping the eagles, but letting people who are making decisions about those animals and, and, and honestly affecting habitat, affecting eagles, affecting all wildlife, affecting our entire future, to let them get away with a free, get out of jail free card because we're not telling the hired help how we want them to care for the garden. And I mean that in the, the much grander sense than the Norfolk Botanical Garden. These people work for us, and they often forget it. And we need to focus that passion. Anybody who doesn't vote has no reason, no right to complain. And anybody who claims to love wildlife who doesn't vote is missing the best thing you can possibly do for wildlife. And it's not a matter of which party you choose, it's a matter of what message you send to the candidate from whatever party's out there. For those of us who work day in and day out with these animals or with the resources, uh, it, it really sometimes is disheartening to feel that nobody cares. Now, at the Wildlife Center of Virginia, we no longer have that feeling. We know that you care. We know because we hear from you every day. We know because everything we do is supported by the donations of people who care. We're not your tax dollars at work. And as we cultivate this family, as we mature as an online community, as a group of neighbors, as a group of friends, we want to be sure to keep in mind that it's not just about being a fan club for a handful of animals. It's about being a family of advocates for a family of wildlife of which those individuals are part. And again, I just want to uh, thank everybody who's put this on and thank you all for being here. And with every gesture, with every message, with every contribution, you are truly moving the ball forward and, and advancing the cause.
you get close enough to it? <laughs> I think rather than giving you a recap of what I uh, spoke about today, which was the history of the Eagles at the Garden, let me kind of put a personal touch to the irony of my being here. Uh, in 1948, my father won a national contest, a jingle contest, for the Black Flag DDT product. I have a copy, I have a photo uh, taken of him being presented with the check. That happened right here in Norfolk. Uh, and today, you probably couldn't find a better champion than myself and the other folks uh, here at the Garden uh, about our misuse of that product. Another irony is uh, the result of the uh, non-use of DDT. My father was an avid rose enthusiast. He was all the time grafting, trying to make new uh, species, uh, and his roses some of his roses started this beautiful rose garden that over here. We only lived about a mile from here, and he was a very good friend of uh, Fred Hewitt. So some of the roses, I don't know whether his roses are still out there, but he was part of starting that. Uh, so, and I, I end up here today uh, not having a thing to do with roses, but having to do with the eagles. But another one of the ironies was in 1991, the subject that uh, Jim Martin has so eloquently spoke uh, to us about today. 1991 in the City Council of Virginia Beach, there was a big debate going on about the land around Back Bay and whether or not the uh, City of Virginia Beach ought to approve 1,700 houses going on property adjacent to Back Bay. Uh, without giving any thought whatsoever to what was happening about us, what was happening to the city of Virginia Beach, the land in Virginia Beach. And I pointed out to the city council that there was a report already out in 1989 about the sea level rises and where was the impact of that going to be uh, impacted first. It's right here right here in southeast Virginia. We, and we had done nothing up to that point to recognize that fact. I was booed for making my comments 20 years ago. Uh, no one was listening. No one wanted to listen. No one at that point cared. That has really changed. Yesterday, those of you who have been up to Baker Hall and saw the uh, mounted bald eagle up there, that's on loan to us from Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge for this festival. And I was uh, talking with the staff there. Believe it or not, they are planning today for the office to be underwater 50 years from now. Think about that. The change that had to have occurred within the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, within the city of Virginia Beach, in the subsequent 20 years, for them to finally come to grips and to come to the realization that uh, the likelihood of that happening is pretty real. And we need to start thinking about that because it's a major social issue. It's going to be a major issue for all the wildlife. Uh, it's going to have to change. It's depending currently on freshwater. It's going to become saltwater again. The history of backwater was, uh, back bay was it wasn't fresh water until 150 years ago. Prior to that, it was salt water. That's going to change again. And it's going to make major changes. But the biggest change is going to be economic. It's going to be dollars. And the only thing, the only thing our politicians listen to is money. They don't hear anything else. So if you want to make an impact, if you want to get your message, you have to talk in terms of dollars and the impact that that's going to make on us, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.